Oh! Oh! And welcome to GT Not Live, where it isn't the holiday season anymore, but it is the season for analog horror. Apparently there's a lot of this stuff that's just going around these days, because I think Matt, what, what, so not only did we have the update on the uh, Mandela catalog just came out not too right. long ago, but then also, uh, I know Walton Files seems like it's gearing up for another release. We covered the ARG uh, kind of clues, the secret website that they had kind of released out that we had to piece together clues around. Um, so it feels like they're ramping up for another one that's coming out there, which is really exciting. But now you have me, What what is this one? So this is a new thing, right? Yes. Okay, what is this? Uh, it's called The Back Rooms. The Back Rooms. The Back Rooms. Okay. Um, Why does that sound familiar? I believe this is based on a creepy pasta. Really? Okay. Um, that sounds, it sounds familiar. Okay. I've got it pulled up. You got okay. Let's let's check yeah. it out. Okay, um, but this has been floating around this specific video that I think that we should react. To. Okay, so is is oh backrooms explain? Okay, so there's a backrooms explain. Someone already did your job. They did it for no. Come on, backrooms wiki. Oh, there's a fandom. Oh yeah, this has been going on for a while. Um, but this it was brought to my attention because of this specific video. Okay. Um, so I learned that it was a creepypasta after I saw this video. Okay. Um, but you can scroll down. It was released pretty recently. Okay, September. I mean, it says it's from September 23rd, 1996. I want to say it came out like two weeks ago. Really? Here, let's see. Yeah, 13 days ago. Oh, two. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Also, Attack on Titan. <laughs> also, Attack on Titan. Uh, oh, wow. Attack on Titan, the Invasion Animated. Oh, cool. So, this person... Okay, so this, to me... Oh, the rumbling activated. Oh, cool. So, this looks like someone who is, I think... I, and I love this corner of YouTube, where they are filmmakers or graphic design... Like, graphic artists. Uh, maybe CGI artists or whatever, who kind of do their own versions of popular IP, Attack on Titan, whatever, to make their name be heard, but then every once in a while do kind of their own personal. So this is terrifying. I don't know what this is, but that's freakish. Uh, these look incredible. But as a result, then they're able to kind of build out their portfolio, build out a fandom, and then get more eyeballs on their independent projects or things that they're just kind of working on uh, that aren't necessarily tied to another existing IP. So you're saying, so it look, oh, wow, this took, wow, this took off 13 days ago, 7.6 million. Whoa, yeah. good for, man, crushing it. All right. I figured we'd hop on the train. So this is so this is an old. So as I understand it, and maybe you don't know fully. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can explore this together. But it's oh, here. I don't want to scan ahead. Um, but it it sounds like this is an old creepy pasta that maybe Kane Pixels has adopted and kind of made into their own, or kind of like done a, a visual of. Or that would make sense to me. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So even though there are other things here, they might not necessarily be tied to this. Yeah. Like, so it seems like kind it's of... It's not all one world. Although this, like, it, if Those you're do, looking yeah. at... These look similar. But I don't think it, the Attack on Titan stuff is related. That's, That's what you think. It's fair to you, say. You'd be surprised. <laughs> attack, attack on Titan Final Season goes to some weird places, okay? <laughs> goes Addresses themes that you wouldn't expect from, you know, from where that series started. So, it's a spoiler alert. Uh, okay, so let's... let's re so, this is just a thing that everyone's reacting to these days? Yeah. Let's okay. Let's let's check it out. More ARG, man. I can't get enough ARG horror. Uh, all right. The back rooms. S step into it. it. Oh, I see. Ape it. Ryan's already done it. Hollow. I don't know Hollow, but Hollow's already done it. Cool. Great video right down here. Oh, an amazing video right down here. Special Ed. Fantastic. Is it a video game? First twelve levels. I believe. Like, it would make sense that a creepypasta had also been a video uh, Like a video, game. like Slenderman kind of yeah. thing? Huh. Interesting. All right. Let's, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I've, it sounds familiar. Like, maybe I've seen it in passing at some point, but it, it's clearly new-ish. So let's, yeah, let's dive into this. I'm, I'm excited. The back rooms. More found footage. Can't get enough. Slow play. Sound. Camera. Rolling. Oh, man. This is like modern day Blair Witch. Action. Look at the lore! We're learning so much lore already. Creepy monkey. Alright, cut. Cut. 
That was good. That was good, guys. All right. What was the win? Uh, that was good. I'm thinking we get a wide angle and then we're done. Okay? All right. Yeah. Cool. cool. Like how much further? Like uh, a little more. Right. A little more. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. so cool already. I love the setup of like a bunch of independent filmmakers. A short film by Kane Parsons. Wait, so he, okay, so hold up. So uh, we're filming. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Then he like falls through. Huh, he like falls through the floor, through reality, through uh, like a sewer. Interesting, all right. I mean, that tells Hello? you everything that you need, which is cool. Why he has a Hello? camera, why he's in here. Hey guys. What is this? <laughs> Looks like the back half of like an empty office. I... Back rooms, like a back room of an office or something. That makes sense to me. It's so isolated and quiet. As a kid. Hello? <laughs> As a kid, I loved places like this. Because it was just like, it was all open and you could just run around and have like a heck of a time. You see it peeking out, something's peeking, something's watching ya. Oh. Slender man. Is someone there? <sighs> yeah, to so just like run down these hallways and just like go crazy. You're like running around uninhibited inside. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, that's cool. What a cool visual. Did they make all this? Is this all graphically done or did they actually like find a set like this? This is so cool. This must be CG generated. This is fantastic. The use of space is so unsettling. Because there's something about like wide open, just empty large spaces that's really it was shockingly claustrophobic. And now we're in the green section. Oh man, you're just lost. You're just lost and alone for days. Is there anyone? Can in anybody there? hear me? Hello? <laughs> That's an understatement. Under oh wait wait there was something there was something around that corner wasn't there? Oh, the tension. I keep waiting for something to happen. He's doing what all those air, what all these analog horrors are doing, which is just like. It's just you steep in the tension of something happening. Hey, arrows, that's helpful. Thank you. Thanks for guiding me. Don't know if I trust those. Don't know if I trust those. What the hell? <laughs> also, the humming of the fluorescence just becoming oppressive. Don't, okay. Hold up, I'm sorry. Handprints. So you know, other people have been here before, obviously. God closed? Don't move. Don't move. Stay st still. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Don't move, stay still, you fool! No. Oh, what the heck? What is it? Nope. No, no, no. It sounds like there's like a humanoid voice in there. And you're just lost. Oh, so cool. Oh, jeez. Sounds like it's trying to talk. 
Oh! It's, it's a hole. It can still come at you, man. It can still come for you. What, part of me wants to rewind and look at what this thing is that's chasing us. On the other hand, I don't want to like... Because when you see too much of the monster, it becomes less scary. So I don't want to, like, reveal it too early. I love how it's such a mundane area, though. Of just, like, here's a bunch of empty rooms and hallways. is so unsettling. Ooh. Hey, at least there's like an outside? Nope, it's an interior courtyard. What the fuck is this place? Huh. Oh, you're just trapped. Got some rope, you can try to trip it up. Item, equip, equip the rope! This... Nope, nothing really. You're not hiding in that dumpster or using that rope, man. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. That rope is going to be useful. Ooh, what hey! The fuck? What the? Fuck? <laughs> it's bigger this on the inside. This isn't real. This, this isn't real. See, the rope would have been helpful there. <laughs> Could have crossed that, maybe. Did a little Tarzan swing. Hmm. Fire exit, huh? Leading up. Yeah. Guess if we're underground, maybe? Oh no, no, you're back in. No, don't go back in. Don't do it. Oh, you fool, why would you go back here? Are you just progressing down and down and down? Try to find those clues on the wall again. You know what I'd be tempted to do? I might be tempted to like try to get into the ceiling. Because these ceilings are usually like lowered ceilings. Oh! Oh! Nope. Do not want. Oh, what? Weird! It's like an animatronic thing? What is it? No! Oh man, more spooky animatronics! See, this is the rope. Rope would have been helpful. Oh! Oh, jeez! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh no! <laughs> the, the cameraman takes a licking and keeps on ticking. <laughs> cool, that thing's built by Nintendo, it's so sturdy. Oh, and that's just where it ends. Weird! So what, so what exactly is this thing? Okay, so now now that we we're at the end of it, we can check it out a little bit. Oh, that is so horrific. So it is kind of like Huh. It's it's one part animatronic kind of 
It's it's a bunch of wires though. It's a little less skeletal than you would think an animatronic would be. It's kind of like a it's like a tri it's like an evil tripod. <laughs> Which to be fair, I I feel like I could take out an evil tripod. Like I think I could wrestle a tripod. Got to bust one of its knees out. Yeah, right? It's just a tripod. Like, as long as one of those legs is not yeah. in operation, you're the good. The way it moves is a little goofy. Right? I <laughs> This shot, everything up up through here was freaking me out. Like, it's and it's legitimately very unsettling, this entire... Like, this is great. This is so well done. The atmosphere is incredible. All of this. And I don't know if this is from the original Creepypasta or this is the, the design of the, the monster or whatever. This... W was a little bit goofy. It's a little goofy. It's a little goofy. And and the fact that he's like so front heavy and he's kind of like wobbling around, kind of like, okay, I'm really running away from like weirdo floppy tripod here. <laughs> Everything up to this point, I'm like, oh, this is horrific. This thing is terrifying. And this is one of the reasons why you never want to reveal too much about your of your monster because then you see this and you're like, oh, I, I, I can take that, whatever. Um... You just push him over. Yeah, right? You just push him over. Like, he's a little spindly thing. The, the one cut, uh, like, probably a minute before this. With the throwing of the chair? Yeah. The throwing of the chair was horrific. Can we see that again? Yeah, yeah, of course. Why, did you see something interesting with it? Or? I just want to see it again. It was really good. It was, like, somewhere around here. -ish. So we're back in. I also want to go back and relook at the clues on the wall. I didn't want to spend too long on it just because I was really into the atmosphere of this whole thing. But I'm curious what the wall's trying to say. Like, w if you had stayed still, would you have survived? Or is that just a mis- is it misleading you? This to me reads as like a motion detector. Okay, so here it comes. Oh! So good. And and this is one of those things that, hey, aspiring filmmakers or or anyone, like this is something that I did when I was in theater. This is something that I still do, or at least I try to do. Uh, it's a little bit harder on YouTube because you have to, you can't like as finely refine every video that you do, but it's something I try to pass along to the editors as they're thinking about setting up their scenes. Um, this moment right here. So you're moving, you stop, and then the beat hits. One of the things that is so importance when you're directing something whether that's uh, on camera or in theater or whatever and one of the easiest mistakes that I think a lot of people fall into is they don't think about cleanly separating their beats and this is a note that I gave the editors uh, in the early days a lot when I was working on game theory it's something that I, I did a lot in theater too where a lot of times people will mix movement and so the audience doesn't know where to focus and so this moment would be less effective if he was still moving forward. But by cleanly separating the beats of we're slowly moving through, we stop for just a second. And whether or not the audience can articulate that and, and sees that you've stopped, it doesn't matter. Now you've given them a clear focal point of like the end of the hallway, then the chair hits, right? As opposed to we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, then the chair hits. So there's multiple planes of movement happening, which lessens the scare impact of it. Um, and this is one of those things that happens a lot when you're directing stuff. Like, you want to make sure that the audience is kind of following you on a B2B basis. And that might be, that might feel unnatural, but it helps you more clearly communicate the story and what's happening in the story and getting the audience to follow you uh, in, in a much smoother, cleaner way. And it makes each individual beat that much more effective. Uh, and so that's actually why I love that moment and why it works so, so well. And there's a lot of creative decisions there that could have lessened that impact. Um, but it, it was just really, really cleanly done. That's really interesting. Yeah. Like, really neat of you to point out. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, blocking and movement is something I never think about. Yeah. So, yeah. like, when people mention it, I'm like, that is so true. Yeah. It's it, And it's it, it's really, I mean... It's funny working from working on St. Jude, right? We worked with we worked with a, a team who was helping put together all that whole production, and I wish that we had had more time in the space to rehearse with them. Because one of the biggest notes for a live production of that scale, where set pieces are moving on, people people are moving on and off, mm -hmm. it's a stage show. Mm -hmm. Like it's on camera, sure, and there's camera movements and stuff that you have to and framing and stuff they have to account for. Yeah. But so much of that show is blocking and stage movement yep. and the people that we are working with who are great and they're very talented and they're awesome at live stuff mm -hmm. 
but for a show that has a lot of moving pieces like that, they aren't theater people. And yeah. so, like, for me, the night before, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, we're having trouble with all these transitions and this and that. I'm like, well, that's because you haven't worked out the block. Like, this is all blocking. Yeah. This is all stage movement and, you know, you choosing to frame the camera here while this part of the set moves away. So that way, when you turn back, yeah. you're, you're over there and it's kind of happened magically. And it's one of those things that if you're a film guy, like, having some training in theater and how bodies move through space allows you to like really help break down scenes like this totally yeah so it's it, like for as much as i say like oh my theater training ah whatever didn't didn't amount to anything or you know i did a couple a couple shows or whatever uh you can translate it in a lot of different ways um and there's a lot and, and there's a lot of bad stuff like in la in in la and it's interesting because la theater mm -hmm. is on in general really bad mm -hmm. um like even and i'm talking about like even i haven't seen a lot of stuff but like even at the highest levels right like the la opera house love yeah. opera mm -hmm. terrible shows mm -hmm. uh at least i saw like four while we were living there yeah. all of them i was like the blocking was so messy it was mm -hmm. so gross because they were filmmakers yeah. who were directing <laughs> theater in la totally. as opposed to you go to new york and because theater and stage show is the predominant uh like art form or kind of like the most known art form out there mm -hmm. like blocking is so crisp so clean and they're able to articulate that and so what really helps is kind of that merging of the mediums yeah. so you're approaching it from both ways which is really really exciting to me yeah um but yeah this is this is super cool uh i will yeah like i said the the monster's a little bit goofy is it the same monster every time like every time he peeks around, I think so. Right? It it, it seems like it was like this. So I did more research. While we were oh, to yeah, yeah. I can fill you in. Yeah, teach later me. On. Teach me a little bit about this. Right now. Yeah, yeah. Please. Okay. Well, I'm just looking seems, for scenes of him just to see. So if I... the back rooms. Yeah. Originally, is a game. It, oh, it started as a game. Um, it's an infinite random level generation. Oh, that's cool. So it's like an immersive experience. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, so the game itself, I believe is responsible for like the atmosphere yeah no totally um, right so it seems to me like this filmmaker sort of used the game as like a as the launch point yeah um and that's then, cool i don't think the game has any of the like vhs found footage sure stuff i think all of that is added in and a lot of like the camera movement is is animated as well yeah 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 um but it exists in the world created by this video game interesting that's cool i mean this i mean the thing like there's so much good stuff in the creepypasta world yeah that you know, there's so many good ideas with the the creepy pasta stuff, with the um, containment breach stuff. Like, there's so much cool lore and interesting IP that just exists out there that you know is so much scarier and so much more effective than what you know modern big budget movie studios deal with at this point. Like, I mean, the reason why Paranormal Activity took off especially that first one because it was like so simple so raw and just had a killer premise and that's like that's what you need man yeah like have a killer premise and then just shoot it effectively like this was so disturbing and it's scarier than like the last three horror movies that i've seen because the other ones are just so predictable right it's also to me so smart to like make use of a medium that already exists yeah and then like throwing these filters and these effects over it yeah. so that like real life footage blends in pretty seamlessly yeah right like honestly I'm assuming this was done on a very limited budget, if if at all, right? If this was just kind of like done independently, and yeah, I can't I can't tell what's real and what's not. Mm -hmm. There there were a couple moments where I'm like, oh, that's obviously computer generated, but like for the most part, like you can't tell. It's yeah. so effectively done, and it merges those worlds together, and it's really and at this point, there's so much, so many free tools or like inexpensive tools that are available to filmmakers. That's awesome. It's so cool. This is so cool. I want to see the full movie of the back rooms now. Update the monster, though. <laughs> I also want to do a film theory now, kind of, on how to survive the back rooms. I'm, I'm really curious. Like, if you're if you're in this situation, how do you survive? Well, so I, I wonder... Because the monster, I think, is an original thing. Sure. The, yeah. the monster doesn't exist in this game. It's just, like... Oh, creepy. the monster doesn't exist in the game? No. Oh! Yeah, oh, so I, this whole time I was assuming, like, oh, and the monster chases you. And no. Huh. The game is just atmospheric. Mm. So it's it's... Just an infinite, like, AI generated And it's just, like, space. disturbing and creepy and mm -hmm. unsettling. Oh, cool! And so he, I'm assuming, took that yeah, and, and sort of added it. something yeah. to it. Yeah, which makes sense. You kind of need, like, a motivating force there outside of, like, I'm wandering aimlessly for infinity. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I want to figure out how to survive the back rooms now. 
Don't move, stay still. It is interesting because he does resemble to me a like motion camera or something. There's a lot of there's a lot of Easter eggs and stuff here too. Like this, I feel like what is this? This is a reference to something. It's there's there's so much unspoken world building here that I love. Like outside of oh it was creepy and it was really tense and it was effective as far as telling this like scary, you know, short story. To me, the the wor the silent world building that goes unexplained is just as compelling and if if not more compelling, right? Like why this? Why this alcove? Why of everywhere there's this dumpster and this random rope? Like it's small little design details like that or this like giant empty space, you know, and you look out and it's just this like vast hallway and you're underground in this like series of factory buildings. Like that's so compelling to me and it makes me want to learn more about this world. And on one hand, it's like that's cool that you've set that up. But on the other hand, as you explain more and more, you start to lose a little bit of that mystery. So it's always that balance of like, how much do you want to explain versus how much you don't want to explain. But just really, really cool. Like, is this a place that people know exists? Because look, there's signs and warnings. So who works here? Who lives here? Um, why is this place necessary? You know, all these filing cabinets that go completely unexplained. And then you're back up into the back rooms where it's being p patrolled. So cool. So, so cool. So unsettling. Uh, well done, uh, Kane Pixels, Kane. So cool, so awesome. Um, and this is, like I said, this is the sort of stuff that, like, I. This is what I love about YouTube. This is what I love about independent video because you get stuff like this, which is so much more effective in nine minutes than an hour and a half long movie that's produced like with a million dollar budget, millions of dollars of budget, right? So really, really cool, really, really disturbing. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. And you know, if you have more creepy pastas that have shown up that we've never seen before, that you want us to theorize about, react to, let us know. Uh, and there you go, we are, well, I am game. I accept all challengers. So uh, in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video, a video for you. See ya!